All right, welcome to another episode of the Ask Swank Show. On today's episode, we're gonna talk about what do you do when you really start getting into industry niche and your clients start worrying about a conflict of interest? What do you, uh, what are some ideas that you can do for a foot in the door strategy? And what do you do when your salespeople tell you that all the leads you're sending them is complete crap? I'm Jason Swank, and I'm answering your questions. And this is Ask Swank. Let's see, this is from Giles. Hopefully I said it right. It said, Giles said, we specialize in design and marketing for bar and restaurant sector. We recently had a couple of meetings with prospects who were concerned about a conflict of interest as we already work on one of the largest players in the sector in the UK. How would you tackle their concerns? There's a couple ways that you can do this. One of my agency clients only serves dental practices. As they look on a map, and they basically say, all right, you have a 10 mile radius of all the people that we can actually help. And so we do it that way. The other way to get around this is actually put different team members on these projects that are in the strategy role. So they don't actually start to kind of say, well, we're doing this one and let's, and you're basically competing against each other on that. But um, what, I, what I always would tell people is, look, you want to work with us because we're the expert in this particular industry and we get this. If you're concerned with us working with your biggest competitor, we'll separate teams. If it's a real issue for you, then I certainly understand. And I've even done this in the past. So I remember this really big bus specialty group coming to us. And they basically said, you know, Jason, you're working with our competitor and we want you to have this business, but you have to tell them no. And so I looked at what they were going to spend, which was like $30,000 a month, compared to what the other company was spending, which was like 2,500. So it was an easy decision. You know, I, I felt bad going to the old client, but I literally said, look, um, we're having to sign this non-compete with one of your competitors. I'm really sorry, I really respect a lot of your work. Um, here's what we're going to be probably doing for them. If you wanna kind of do this, have us do this service for you, we're gonna stick with you since you've been with us, and then we won't work with them. But obviously, going from 2,500 to like 30,000 was a huge jump. So we had to part as friends and go on. So that's how we got through that part. Next question. So Bobby asked, what assessments, and this was from last week, so thank you very much. Bobby asked, what assessments would you use for getting your foot in the door with clients? So there's a couple that you can use. Well, let's first define kind of the foot in the door strategy. So many of us are going after these clients, pitching our core service, which is basically pitching marriage to them at first. And it's a long, hard decision, especially for a big commitment, depending on whatever your core service is. But if you can take a slice off of that and kind of drill it down and give them a mini commitment, it's a lot easier decision for them to commit to, right? And then that builds trust and authority, and then you can go from there. Or some of the foot in the door strategies that we use were audits. So, you know, I always tell everybody this, you know, we used to find people that were spending over $10,000 a month in AdWords. And we'd literally call them up and say, hey, we know you're spending over $10,000 a month in AdWords. There's lots of things that we notice with people spending this much that they're probably missing out. We would like to do an audit for you um, and make sure that you're running everything right. And we charged, I think, $2,500 at the time for this. Now, we converted probably about 85 to 90%, and these were on cold calls. Now these were targeted cold calls that we researched on, and then once we got in there, from the foot in the door, we would identify the issues that they were having, and then we could move on. So it was really pretty cool. Other um, foot in the door strategies would be discoveries, like discovery calls, right? So a lot of times people call you, and they can't really define what they want, but they know they, need, they can identify the problem. So what we would say is let's meet with you for a couple hours or a half day or a full day and let's just build out the roadmap, the blueprint for you and then we can uh, decide if you like that plan. You can go do that plan yourself or you might want us to do it or you might want someone else to do it. Heck, if they had you do this and you're already building that relationship, they trust you, they're going to go with you. You're 20 times more likely to get that business later on. Um, some other foot in the door strategies could be mind mapping sessions. Now a mind mapping session is, is we would get on a whiteboard, we'd start drawing a bunch of bubbles and connecting things together like challenges. Um, we would 
connect uh, you know, their, their goals, we connect their target markets, how are we gonna reach people. It's basically giving them a visualization of all, like a big darn data dump, okay? So you can actually do that. So those are three really good ones that you guys should go use. So Phil says, or Phil asks, there's one thing I'm consistently hearing from my sales team, and it's just bad timing for my clients right now. The easiest way to really kind of see if your sales team is kind of blowing smoke up you know where is to change your, your sales process. And so what we had is whenever a lead would come in or an opportunity, they had to go through an application, okay? So, and think about how my site works right now. So if you go to jasonswank.com slash blueprint, you'll see a page and it has a little cool video. You should check it out. And it basically says, hey, would you like me to build you a custom lead generation system for free? Um, if you wanna know more, send me details. So that obviously is some kind of intriguing offer. People are like, heck yes, I want you to build me a blueprint, uh, especially if it's for free. And then once they fill that out through that little squeeze page, then they go to the next page about the details where I go over kind of the criteria that they need to meet, what's going to happen, why am I doing this, what's the, you know, the outcome that they can actually get. And then if they qualify and they kind of go through all those mental checklists, then they fill out an application. It's kind of going through the challenges, their objections, their budget, are they the decision maker, how much the company of the own, the revenue of the company, all, anything you want. And now, if that salesperson said they're just not ready or it's just a bad lead, then you can kind of turn it on and be like, well, explain to me how this doesn't match up with what I'm looking here. Other things that you can do is have weekly sales meetings. We always have weekly sales meetings where we would go over the key accounts as well as learn, use this as a training exercise for the salespeople. Because look, you as an agency owner and a CEO, you're gonna be the best salesperson in the most cases, right? And so your job is to make your people better all the time. And so you wanna constantly be coaching them and getting them to the next level. So you, they're going to make mistakes. They're gonna say, yeah, the client's just not ready yet. And so if someone said that to me, I'd say, well, did you use the three eyes? And if, for any of you guys that have been following me for a while, the three eyes are what's the biggest issue, what's the impact on their business, and how important is it to them? So now, if they can't say, well, I don't know what the biggest issue, they just want a website, Jason. Be like, you're not asking the right questions. And you have to kind of figure that out. But you have to always assume, and especially in front of them, be like, how can I help you out more? Why do you not think that they're not ready? And why do you think it's a bad lead? That's what we would do. All right, so if you like this week's of Ask Swank, I want you to kind of join the conversation. If you're on iTunes, I want you to go to the website, go to jasonswank.com slash askswank30. Put in your comments of what you like, what things we did not answer for you that we could answer on the next episodes coming on. And if you're listening on YouTube, obviously comment below. Uh, and if you're on Facebook too, we can do that as well. All right, take care.